Hi, everybody. Welcome into Sports Talk Chicago. My name's John Zaglou. Great to have you here. Channel 59.3 B-Pod TV and Roku. Big news. The Bears' schedule's out. We're going to predict every single game and go through what the record might be in 2022. It's a great video, and it comes your way in just a second. Before we get started, make sure you follow me on Twitter and Instagram at John Z Sports and on Facebook, John Zaglou. You can watch more of this show. Search up Sports Talk Chicago on YouTube or go to sportstalkchicago.com. You can watch more shows from the VPod TV network. Search up VPOD TV on YouTube. I want to start today with this. I don't know how many games the Bears are going to win this year. <laughs> Just want to say it right off the bat. So if I'm wrong, or in a couple of months, I predict six and the Bears win nine. I predict five, the Bears win 10. I don't know what to say to that. <laughs> That's the hard part about predicting what the Bears will do with this schedule. Teams change. Personnel changes. Coaches change. Conditions change. In-game conditions. So it's really hard to predict in May what the Bears will do in December or January of next year. We don't know how any of these teams are going to shake out either. We can make predictions and assumptions based on last year, but we can't do it for now in this moment or in a couple of months. Maybe the 49ers end up trading Jimmy Garoppolo. Maybe Trey Lance will start game one. We don't know yet. A lot of these things we don't know yet. Is Daniel Jones going to start for the Giants in week four? Who's going for the Commanders week six? We don't know. That's the point of schedule predictions. They're fun to do, and they give you a good idea of what to expect somewhat for the new year, but... There are tons of variables that we can't even decipher or count when we make these predictions. I'm not trying to cover up my own ass. I mean, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I'll say it, but don't expect this thing to be 100% correct. <laughs> At the end of the day, I have no clue what's going to happen for any of these teams in the next three, four, five months. It's anybody's guess at this point. Just want to make sure I make it clear for all of you. I want to go through this schedule, weeks 1 through 18. We'll break down each game. And at the end, we'll talk about where the Bears could stand based on my prediction here in May. Here we go. Week 1, 49ers at noon at home. Believe it or not, I think this could be a win for the Bears. And here's why. We don't know who their quarterback's going to be. If it's Jimmy Garoppolo, the Bears could game plan defensively and easily take over the game. Jimmy Garoppolo is good for at least one to two interceptions per game. And if not, he throws shorter passes, high completion percentage, but also prone to mistakes. I've called him a high-tech Mitch Trubisky before, and I'll continue to say so. The reason his passer rating is so high is because of his completion percentage. That's it. He throws just as many interceptions, if not more, than Mitchell Trubisky. And their touchdown-to-interception ratio from a career standpoint is pretty much similar. If you game plan for Garoppolo, you're going to be fine. Trey Lance, that's the wild card factor. But here's what I'll say about Lance. Inexperienced, going to be his first full year potentially as the starting quarterback, taking first-team reps. This is a different situation for him, for a guy who only played one year in college total. The Bears' defense will have a field day with whomever is going to be playing quarterback. Their big problem is going to be containing the run, containing Debo Samuel, and that could end up bailing out the 49ers. But I do believe this could be a win for the Bears week one. They would shock everybody, and it may be one of the only times you'll see the Bears in first place in the NFC North. So make sure you got your cameras ready to take that picture of the standings when they put them up after game one. It's going to be a win for the Bears. We go to week two at Green Bay. That's an obvious loss. Sorry, I'd love to sit here and tell you the future's here and the Bears will win. They'll beat Green Bay on the road at Lambeau. Not going to happen. We know where Green Bay is and we know where the Bears are right now. <laughs> Even without Devontae Adams, Aaron Rodgers is still king in Green Bay. And he's going to do great. He's going to carve up the Bears like he always does. It's going to be a humiliating loss and it's a matter of how bad the Bears will lose in prime time on Sunday night football. Yikes. One and one. Texans week three. That should be a win. Lovey Smith, by the way. How do you like that? He's coming back to Chicago. That should be an interesting game. 
although the Texans personnel-wise are much weaker and in a much worse position than the Bears. Davis Mills will be starting at quarterback. That should be a great game to watch, by the way, to compare Mills and his development to Justin Fields, how they both worked out. Mills, ironically enough, had a very good rookie year despite the record and despite the players around him. 16 touchdowns, 10 picks, not bad at all. He was the highest-rated rookie passer last year out of any quarterback. Mac Jones slid at the end of the season. Davis Mills continued to be consistent and produce. Talk about a surprise for a guy from Stanford whom nobody really talked about. So I'm curious to see how he does against the Bears defense. He's still younger, though. I think the Bears should be able to win that game. And they're going to start a 2-1 here in 2022. That's at least my guess. At the Giants, week four at noon. This should be another win for the Bears. I would be shocked if they lost this game. Daniel Jones is on his fifth-year option. He needs to prove himself this year. And Daniel Jones, frankly, is not a good quarterback. Daniel Jones is a bust, and he sucks. And maybe there weren't many other options in that draft for the Giants. I get it. It was a horrible quarterback draft, but still, bad quarterback. Bust for where he was picked. Top 10. Sucks. Has done nothing. Mitch Trubisky's done more than him. Anybody's done more than him. They're holding on to him for a new year to work with Brian Dable. It's not going to work. The Bears will easily win that game. They're going to be a 3-1 and one through four weeks, which is exciting, to say the least. Week five, they're going to be at Minnesota. Here's where it gets a bit fishy. They're going to be on the road against Captain Kirk Cousins, Dalvin Cook, Justin Jefferson. I think at the end of the day, this one will come down to a close field goal, potentially. The Bears will lose this one just by virtue of being on the road. I will say I could see a situation easily, which the Bears sweep the season series against Minnesota. But I have my doubts about the Bears playing well against them on the road against Kirk Cousins in a noon game. Remember, not a primetime game. It's noon. Noon Kirk Cousins is 10 times different than primetime Kirk Cousins. <laughs> Noon Vikings football is 10 times different than primetime Vikings football. (laughs) I don't see the Bears winning this one. It's going to be a close game, but probably a loss in the end. That's going to put the Bears at three and two through five weeks. Commander Thursday night football on Amazon. Interesting. The Bears should easily win this. I have no clue who their quarterback is going to be. Who? Taylor Heineke? Sam Howell? from North Carolina. Whoever it's going to be doesn't really matter. The Bears are going to win this game. Commanders have a great defensive front, no question. Good offensive line, too. A couple of former Bears there, including Charles Leno, who made the Pro Bowl last year, but still. Justin Fields, I think, needs to win this game, too. I know the Commanders have a good defensive situation. This is primetime Thursday night. You're facing a team that's obviously not going anywhere. you got to win this game if you're Justin Fields. You have to take control of this game, and this is going to be one of those games to me that I circle up on my calendar. I want to see what he does. Primetime commanders, not much expectations from them. How's Justin Fields going to do in primetime? Will he show development by week six of his sophomore year against a pretty bad team? Can he pull it off? I do think the Bears indeed win, but I want to see how Justin Fields does in this one. They're going to be at four and two through six weeks. Monday Night Football, New England. Joe Buck, Troy Aikman on that call. I'm conflicted. I'd love to sit here and tell you the Bears are going to pull this one out because it's going to be Fields against Mac Jones, two guys from the same quarterback class. Jones, obviously, is a much better team around him. That's why he put up the numbers that he did. But Bill Belichick is notorious for messing up offensive rookie quarterbacks. And I have a feeling in this one, Justin Fields is going to be stymied. I hope not. I hope he proves me wrong. I'm a little bit concerned about it, though. This will end in the Bears' loss, unfortunately. It's going to put him back down to four and three through week seven. Week eight, Dallas at Dallas, noon. No thanks. That's going to be a loss for the Bears. Put them at four and four. Good luck facing off against Dak Prescott, Ezekiel Elliott. I know Elliott isn't what he once was, but when you're in Dallas for a noon game against Dak, against Zeke, 
and your run defense isn't that good. It's going to be a tough one for the Bears. They're going to drop to four and four. They got the Dolphins week nine. This one, I genuinely do not know how it's going to go. They're going to be at home. The Bears historically have not been that good against the Dolphins, but then again, if they're starting Tua Tunga by Aloha, there's a way to defend Tua. I like Tua, but there's a way to defend him. Got to get him moving out of the pocket. His arm strength is not as good as other quarterbacks. If you make him throw the football, if you force him to throw, if you make him run around and then throw it off balance, off his back foot, it's going to be short naturally. There will be tons of interceptions. So there is a way in which the Bears could win. The question is, can they play to that game plan and mess up Tua and have him flustered? Don't know. I feel like they could potentially. I'll give them the win on this one to put them at five and four. Lions week 10, six and four. That's self-explanatory. <laughs> at Atlanta. Interesting game. The return of Ryan Pace and Phil Embry. Everybody's in Atlanta. I really hope the Bears stick it up their butt. Oh, I really hope they do. To Phil Emery and to Ryan Pace, I hope they kick their ass in that Week 11 game. Quarterback situation there is going to be different. No more Matt Ryan. Younger team, rebuilding still. I think the Bears could actually pull it off, and you know, it's going to put them at 7-4, and four, believe it or not, according to my prediction for Week 11. This is interesting. Week 12 at the Jets, Zach Wilson and Justin Fields. I love this, by the way. This is the third time we're talking about quarterbacks from the same class facing off. We didn't see that much last year, so I'm very much looking forward to all these games. The Niners, the Jets, New England, they got two guys in each game who were drafted around the same time and who have different Steps of progression, different steps in where they are career-wise. It's going to be so interesting to watch and compare what they're both going to do. The Bears should win this game, which would technically put them at 8-4, and four, and this is interesting. I have not reviewed this schedule before talking to you. I wanted to do this live, so that's going to put them at 8-4. and four. Packers, Week 13, that's a loss, even at home. Make it 8-5 and five going into the bye. You got four games left. Eagles. I don't think so. Going to put them at eight and six, even at home. The concerning part with the Eagles is they have good offensive weapons. Jalen Hurts is back. Say what you want about Jalen Hurts. He led the Eagles to a playoff appearance last year. I know he still has to prove himself more, but Hurts is a bona fide dual threat. He is. He rushes for a good amount of yards, could throw the ball to 3,000 plus passing yards last year, 500 plus rushing yards. Not a bad quarterback at all. And the Eagles made the playoffs with him and a rookie head coach, Nick Sirianni. So I think at that point, the Bears will drop to eight and six. Bills, automatic loss, eight and seven. Sorry. I'd love to say the Bears have a shot in that game, but you got Josh Allen. You got Sean McDermott scheming defensively against Justin Fields. Even if they're at home, it's not going to work. That's the Christmas Eve game. So, But the Bears at 8-7 and seven with two more games to go. They'll get Detroit week 17 on New Year's Day. That should be a win, which would put them at 9-7. and seven. Then week 18 versus the Vikings at 9-7. and seven. At home, I feel like a lot of that's going to depend on Playoff implications for both teams. What if the Vikings are, for example, at the top of the division? Highly doubt it, but what if they are? Maybe they'll sit stars. Maybe the Bears will do the same, depending on where they are, or vice versa. We don't know. But right now, I will pick the Bears to win that one. They lost in my predictions earlier on the road against the Vikings. I'll say they win this one, which would put the Bears tentatively at 10 and 7, according to my predictions. Now, this is much better than I expected out of them. I still don't think this will get them to the playoffs, though. 10 and 7 will put them in the hunt. And at the end of the day, if the Bears go 10 and 7, that is a wild success for this season, no doubt. For Eber Blues, for Poles, for Justin Fields. Everybody wins if the Bears go 10-7. and seven. Everybody. 
this team's going to look so good going into 2023 with cap space, with positivity, with a renewed confidence in Justin Fields, a renewed confidence in this coaching staff, this GM, everybody. If the Bears even went nine and eight, I'd be pretty happy. Eight and nine. Anything better than six and 11, I think it calls for a celebration. I don't want to be a moral victory guy. I'm not a moral victory guy. But when you look at what's happened in the past three or four months, even when it comes to this Bears franchise, there's been drastic change. And there's been so much at once that we forget about what exactly has happened. There's a new head coach. There's a new GM. There's a second-year quarterback who had a horrible time last year who needs to develop. There are a bunch of one-year contracts and players who will be gone at the end of this season. You're expecting tons of roster turnover going into this year, then more come the year after. Got a sophomore quarterback trying to develop, new head coach, new offense, new defense. New GM. A lot of changes have happened for the Bears. And they went 6-11 and 11 last year with a whole different regime. And a rookie quarterback who was thrown to the Wolves. To me, if the Bears do anything better than 6-11, and 11, anything, does not matter, they're going to be fine. And it's going to look so good for them. I'm saying 10-7 right now, and even that surprises me. But again, I wanted to do this live for you. I did not look at the schedule prior to this video. This is all first reaction, gut reaction just for you. Look, based on gut reaction here in mid-May, based on all these teams and what they did last year and what their expectations are for this year, the Bears have a shot to not only go over 500, but potentially contend, maybe not get, but contend for a playoff spot. That's pretty damn surprising i'll tell you that's very surprising maybe i'll look like a fool in five or six months maybe they'll be seven and ten or five and twelve and i'll be criticizing them every week <laughs> but based on what i see right now based on all these teams and where they expect to be this could be a positive year for the Bears, which is surprising. Again, I'm pinching myself right now even saying this stuff. I'm shocked, but it's true to an extent. We don't know what's going to happen. Go through the list one more time. 49ers, that'll be a win, 1-0. Green Bay, 1-1. One one. Texans, 2-1. Giants, 3-1. Minnesota, 3-2. Commanders. Four and two, New England four and three, Dallas four and four, Dolphins five and four, Lions six and four, Atlanta seven and four, the Jets eight and four. Then they got the Packers to eight and five, then into the bye week. Eagles, they'll lose eight and six. Bills lost eight and seven. Detroit win nine and seven. Then the Vikings a win at home in the last game of the season, 10 and seven. The games in which I could see flipping for the Bears right now are the ones that seem the most vulnerable. Could be the Dolphins, last game of the year with the Vikings, Eagles, and Atlanta. So you got four games that are total toss-ups, really. And that's going to determine the success or lack thereof for this season for the Bears. That means if they won all those games, I could see them winning 11 games. If they lose all those, they're back to six. And that's the beauty of football. A bounce here, a bounce there, and you could be at a 10 and 7 record or 7 and 10. So I'm unsure of how this is all going to play out. I'll do another schedule of videos. We get closer to the season and we find out more about who's where, which player signed places. We'll do it again. But right now in mid May, I'm thinking the Bears will go 10 and 7. Am I crazy? If I am, come and tell me. But am I crazy? Seriously. When you look at this schedule, the Bears had a pretty good draw for this season. Very good draw compared to last year's, especially. I don't know. It's very interesting, though, to see how this all played out with their schedule. Oh, and by the way, throughout the month of December, they're not even going to play on the road. They're going to be exclusively at home. 
That's another positive. It's a weird schedule this year, but also beneficial in some senses. There's a lot to determine, though, and we all know that. That's why at the beginning of this video, I gave you a disclaimer. <laughs> we don't know anything yet. I could sit here and say 10 wins today and 7 tomorrow based on a move, a corresponding move that the Bears make or another team makes, one of their opponents makes. We don't know, and we won't know until games are played. But right now, based on their opponents, based on how their schedule shakes out, I wouldn't be surprised if the Bears finish over 500, if they win 10 games. And again, think about the significance of this. Just a few months ago, we're talking about a new GM, new head coach, second-year quarterback with a new offense, new players who are here in one-year deals, tons of roster overhaul and transition, dead cap, new cap. There have been a lot of moves. This team, to their credit, has been very active. And things are somewhat looking up. Got to give credit where it's due for the moment. The Bears aren't looking too bad right now. And that all goes to Ryan Poles, Matt Eberflus, and company. They could be in a much worse position. They got a decent schedule. And they've made tons of moves. None that I like, or some I don't like. But at the end of the day, they did these to help out the team. That's what they think, at least. I still would like more wide receiving help for Justin Fields. But free agency isn't over. Trades, franchise tags, all that stuff is still in play at this point. Wait till free agency number two in June. The Bears may not be done yet. They could be, but maybe not. So it'll be interesting to see and watch. But as of right now, don't be shocked if the Bears play better than 6-11. and 11. For once, there's an optimistic tone to that statement. It's possible, based on this schedule, the Bears could actually pull it off. Thanks for watching today's show here on VPOD TV, channel 59.3 in Roku. Really appreciate the time. Remember, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at John Z Sports and on Facebook at John Zaglul. You can watch more of this show. Search up Sports Talk Chicago on YouTube or go to sportstalkchicago.com. You can watch more shows from the VPOD TV network. Search on VPOD TV on YouTube and watch me every night right here at 1030. So long, everyone. 